Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally going to be doing that joint review I was talking about for um, Keeper of the Lost Cities, the first book with my daughter. This is Jocelyn. Hi. She's 10. She is almost done with fifth grade, so she's like pretty much exactly the audience that this book was written for. And since, since I have read the first one, she's actually read the entire series that's available. Um, the first eight books. Mm -hmm. The first eight books are out and there will be an eight and a half which I think is like a novella that comes out in like November and I think the last book also comes out in November. Is that right? Um, I don't think they announced it. I think they did. Well, anyway, doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, I still haven't started the second book. I really need to do that. But um, I wanted to talk about the story with you guys from, you know, a 31 year old and also from a actual, an actual middle grader. So um, I guess we'll just start with uh, kind of a brief synopsis of the plot. Okay. So I'm gonna let Jocelyn um, explain a little bit of what the book was about. Okay, so the book is by Shannon Messenger. Um, it's basically like in the elven world. Um, let me, we have like let me interject. <laughs> so the book is about a girl. What's her name? Sophie Foster. Sophie Foster. How old is she? Um, well, I think she's 12. 12. Um, she's 12 in the beginning of the first book, and she lives in San Francisco, San Diego? San Francisco. California. And um, basically, since she was little, what, like three, she hit her head or something? She was like, she was five and hit her head. Five? So ever since then, she's be able, been able to hear everyone's thoughts around her. And so she's like, um, like a prodigy in school. She's like smarter than all the other kids mm -hmm. um, and she is just it finds it very easy for that aspect but has like no friends basically um, so then basically like the very first chapter right we get um, she's in the museum yeah yeah so she's on a class field yeah. trip and the very first chapter I mean Shannon messenger just gets right into it <laughs> which is good um, because the world she's building isn't the human world anyway but we find out thanks to another character that comes that um she is not actually a human and that's why she can hear people's thoughts she is an elf mm -hmm. okay and then what happens um so the juju founder his name's fitz backer and fitz is a main character or like a side character mm -hmm. he's pretty important he's important he's in all the books okay um so he finds sophie and then he takes her to where she's supposed to be. It's called one the, of the Lost Cities. Yeah, the Lost City. What's her city called that she lives in? What do you mean? The city she lives in. You don't know what it's called? The Elven City she lives in? It's called like, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to pronounce those things. And they, there are like the Lost Cities like Atlantis and stuff like that. Yeah. That's like not supposed to be real mm -hmm. for humans. Um, She goes there and like, um, she has to do a lot of like, so first she goes there, but they're doing this thing so nobody's out, but humans are banned from the lost cities, so they had to go there and then they had to leave really quickly. And, um, let's just yeah. quickly summarize the whole book though, not like chapter by chapter. Like, what happened? The whole book is about her coming and she's so behind everyone else her age, right? Mm -hmm. Because they've been knowing, they've known that they're elves, they grew up with elves family. She finds out her family's not a real family. She doesn't know who her parents are. She um, has to go and stay with these people she doesn't know. They kind of sponsor her. And um. then she starts at this like magical school. Like it's very Hogwarts-esque, except it's for elven magic. And her ability to, to read people's minds, that's unique, right? even in that world it's she's pretty, better it's pretty rare mm -hmm. and she's like she can like penetrate even the strongest like like blocks or whatever right yeah but her mind is blocked off from everyone right nobody can read hers and because of that we find out that she's what, like a secret keeper probably in this? Um, yeah she a lot of them she doesn't know she right. doesn't know the secrets right they, right right yeah yeah I mean they're so far buried that she doesn't even know so mm -hmm. that's a pretty good summary of what happens in the first book. It's just an adventure and her, it's very much introducing this new world uh, to us through Sophie um, because it's her first experience too. And the world building is, I think it's really well done. It's really well paced. It doesn't feel very like info dumpy. Like it's not more information at once than you can process, which is really good. But also it feels really fleshed out. It feels like it's a real place that she's writing about. And um, you meet about 
you meet a bunch of characters and, they, and their relationships to Sophie. And there's people you like and there's people you're not sure about. But um, it gets a little scary at the like climax. Um, so I think that was... That really made, well done. That made me really scared. I know, I remember you were like terrified. It was like 10 p.m. and I came in here and I just sat here and finished the rest She was of like, I'm, I'm scared, but I can't tell you why because you haven't gotten there yet. Because we actually shared the same physical copy and she finished it before me. Um, but yeah, so I thought we would go over um, Jocelyn's favorite things about the book, like top three favorite parts or aspects of the story and then her least favorite part. So I'm going to let her start with number one. Okay, so the, my first favorite part is probably, um, wait, like, I like the way it's written. Is that a Yeah, poetic? the writing. Yeah, yeah the writing style. She, she describes everything really well, and you can tell what's going on. Yeah, um, her description's really good. Not overdone. And second thing I like is, um, like, how a lot of the characters like they have their own personalities and you can imagine them really well yeah they're yeah they're each really well written like fleshed out like they feel like real people mm -hmm. they're not like just shallow like they only have one personality trait mm -hmm. yeah they all they have like a whole personality mm -hmm. in the book and you can like imagine it really well mm -hmm. and what's your last favorite thing about the book um i really like I don't know. I mean, there's this character I really like. Is that is that something I can Yes, say? you can absolutely say uh, you have a favorite character. My favorite character, his name's Keith Sensen. He's really funny. He's a good character. The best character. <laughs> yeah, Keith. Uh, I've only read the first book, but I liked Keith in the, uh, so in the first book. He's kind of the comedic relief, but he's also like a cute boy, and he's older than Sophie, and um, apparently that's like a, a popular ship for the series. Oh gosh, yeah. That's Jocelyn's favorite thing. There's another, there's another ship with Sophie and Fitz, and if you ship it, I will be mad at you. She will not be mad at you. You're entitled to your own opinion. She just doesn't agree with you. <laughs> um, what's the names of the ships? Didn't you say they have names? Yeah, they have names. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? Okay, so Sophie and Fitz is called Sophitz or Fitzby. I think that's how you pronounce it. Okay. And Keith and Sophie is So Keith or I don't remember what the other one's called. Oh, uh, wait, no, that'd be spoiling. The don't spoil. <laughs> I, won't, I won't spoil the second. Part. So, um, what was your least favorite part of this book? Hmm, that's a hard thing to say. Did anything happen that you didn't like? Oh yeah, okay. that, that scary part. I hated that so part. So I'm going to put like a spoiler warning somewhere on the screen so she can tell you about it and tell you why it was so frightening. <laughs> it was, okay, she, um, her and her best friend, they got kidnapped and it was really... Yeah, it was legitimately like... She just scary. described it, and literally, I could think of it, and it was it was scary. It isn't like one of your fears being kidnapped. Like that's one of your personal. That's one of my top like fears. biggest fears. Um, it was one of mine too when I was little. That's so funny. It still, kind of is. No one would want to kidnap me now. I'm not worth anything. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was well done. Like Sophie's um, blindfolded and stuff, so she doesn't know where she is, who has her. She's like scared, and they keep talking about how they're gonna kill them. Especially her friend, because he's not important like Sophie is. And he's so, like, they're like, he's not important, let's just kill him. Yeah, and so, like, you have no idea who it is, she doesn't know anything, and, um, Shannon Messenger did a really good job. It wasn't, like, drug out too long or anything like that, so, um, it was suspenseful, but, yeah, she didn't, she wasn't feeling that. She was very glad when it was over. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, it's finally over. So, spoilers done. We're not, uh, talking about spoilers anymore. You can you come should back. Put a, you should put a timestamp. Well, I'll just put a thing that's a spoiler. Okay. Like I just said. Um, so anyway, what do you rate this book out of five stars? How many stars did you give it? Or would you give it? Six out of five. So I guess she really liked it, since that's not a rating. Um, and I gave it four? Is that what I gave it? I don't know. I think I gave it four out of five stars. Um, I can tell that um, I'm probably going to end up giving some of the other books five stars because it's always hard with the first book in a fantasy series because there's a lot of information you have to get across so you don't have as much time for character development and the plot but I mean what we did have in this book was was great and these are really big books for kids but um the font's big the spacing's big and it's a middle grade so they read really fast um but yeah uh, I read 
the other books in like a day besides the last one yeah she like just breezed through them she had the first few and then she made all a's on her report card so i went ahead and just ordered her the rest of the series on amazon and she read them so quickly <laughs> so mm -hmm. now she has them all so i can read them at my leisure and i promise i will continue on but um yeah i definitely recommend the series for adults and i'm sure jocelyn you recommend it I recommend it for everyone. It's a really good thing. Well, if you're five years old, don't read it. But like, I, I don't think they can read it at five. Well, I don't think that would be too difficult. I didn't know how to read at five. You didn't know how um, to read books like that at five. But basically, if you're like my, if you're like ten to like however old she is, thirty-one. Mm-hmm. To any age. Ten to ninety-nine. No, you could probably start that book around seven or eight. Seven or eight. Really? Those books are really long. Well, I mean, I read I read books like that when I was younger. Not all kids, just like kids that like to read a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so that's all we wanted to talk about today. Um, we hope you guys liked our joint review and getting two totally different points of view. Um, if you have any other middle grade books you want to suggest for Jocelyn or for me, um, we would love to hear them and we can even review some if you want us to. Just let us know. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more of me and sometimes Jocelyn, subscribe. Please subscribe. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.